In this video, we're going to show you how to install the upstream O2 sensor on your Jeep Grand Cherokee located above the catalytic converters. Now there's going to be two sensors on either side of the engine. The process will be similar for both sides, but on the driver's side, it's going to require the removal of the front drive shaft. And we're going to hop into the vehicle, put the vehicle transmission in neutral. Now that you have your vehicle's transmission in neutral, you want to go ahead and disconnect the ground terminal on your battery. To access your battery, you want to go ahead and open up the back passenger door, slide the passenger front seat forward and access this panel right here. Put your hands underneath this little flap and lift up. On the front side of this panel, there's gonna be two more clips further up. So slide your hand up underneath and pop those up. Go ahead and remove that panel and set it aside. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen the ground terminal here. Go ahead and wiggle that terminal free. We're gonna remove our transmission splash guard here. There's normally four half inch bolts. There's one here. There would normally be one right over here, but ours is missing. Let's go ahead and remove the two on the back side. Using a 16 millimeter socket, we're gonna loosen and remove the four bolts for this bracket. Now I'm gonna use our jack on the transfer case itself. Now what this is gonna do is literally just support this. I'm not jacking up the vehicle by the transfer case. When we go to head, go ahead and remove our transmission cross member here, we don't want this to fall down. That would be bad. So just put your jack underneath the, the transfer case here. You can put it on this side here, use a block of wood and just support it there. Remove the three bolts on the side of the transmission bracket. Go ahead and use a 16 millimeter socket for this. Move the bolts on the passenger side. Go ahead and use a 16 millimeter socket for this. Go ahead and use a 16 millimeter socket for this. On our bracket, we have two 15 millimeter nuts on the transmission mount itself. This last nut here is the only one holding this bracket in place. that hold the bracket and once you get that off go ahead and remove this and set it aside before we separate our front drive shaft you want to go ahead and mark it in the position so when we reinstall it it goes together in the same exact location when we mark this we're going to repeat the process for the front portion of the front drive shaft i'm going to mark here We'll do the same for the front. Now we're gonna remove the Allen bolts on the rear of the front drive shaft first. We're gonna use a number eight Allen. Now 
Now, once you get your bolts out, you wanna go ahead and tap around the edge here and separate the rear unit from the coupler here. Now, the reason why we did the rear first is what we can do is we can bring this up and secure it up here. That's gonna give us a better angle to get to the front Allen bolts on the front part of the drive shaft. Now we use a securing strap to wrap around the drive shaft up and over the back part of the transmission area here and brought it back around the other side and hooked it onto the transmission mount just to hold this up and out of the way. We're going to disconnect our securing strap. Bring our drive shaft down. Before we remove this here, I'm going to go ahead and mark this as the rear. And this is the front. There we go. Pop that out and set it aside. Our right, heat shield is held on by a couple 10 millimeter bolts. And we have one more on the upper back portion here. I'm gonna follow this up, locate your O2 sensor, and we're gonna disconnect it from that little retainer clip. And once you separate that from the clip, you're gonna push down on this upper tab here. You can reach up there, pinch and pull the two connectors apart, like so. Using a 22 millimeter wrench, we go ahead and loosen our O2 sensor. Now as we start to undo this here, unthread it from our cat, once you have this loose, go ahead and unthread it. You might have to use the wrench to remove it all the way. And once it's out, go ahead and set that aside. Go ahead and install the sensor. We have some anti-seize compound on the threads. When installing the sensor, you wanna make sure that you spin the wire with the sensor. You don't want that to bind up. Thread that in as far as you can. Now the washer on here is a crush washer. So once that bottoms out, you wanna go ahead and you're gonna feel that washer start to compress and crush as you tighten it. That's gonna complete that seal on that catalytic converter. Go ahead and make sure that's good and tight. Inspect it, make sure that the there is no gap around that gasket and it's nice and tight. Take that connector, bring it up, plug it into the harness. You can hear it and feel it snap into place. And press that back onto the plastic retainer up top on the side of the transmission. You're gonna place your heat shield up into place. Line that up. I'm gonna get the two lower bolts started here. Just have to move that heat shield around a little bit to get that bolt to line up. I was able to push the bolt through the heat shield, see where it came out, and then guide the bolt into where it's threading into. So I'm gonna thread that in as far as I can by hand. Snug that down. And our heat shield is kind of in the way of our drive shafts here. So we're just gonna go ahead and push that up to maneuver that, make clearance for our front shaft here. 
Now we're going to install our drive shaft here. I went ahead and when we had started this here, we had the yellow crayon marker and we marked the front diff where this was to line up with. And I also marked front on this here so I knew which end went where. And I wanna kinda of get this lined up. goal is is to start getting some of these bolts started so I'm just wiggling this back and forth gently to get one of these bolts started now with one bolt started here I'm going to go ahead and pop the back half in so I have the yellow mark here lines right up on our transfer case so we know that we have this lined up go ahead and pop that into place and then we can pull it out a little bit. Now we're gonna line up our yoke right here, line up the crayon, and if we look, our bolt holes line up pretty good, exactly where they're supposed to be. We'll do the same thing here. Just gonna go ahead and get a bolt started. Now at this point here, it doesn't matter how you do it. You wanna go ahead and install your bolts and your uh, couplers here all the way around. Do the same on the front. And then you wanna go ahead and gently snug these down. So the reason why we're doing this by hand first we don't want to put power tools on this here is that for some reason if one of these should start to cross thread and bind well we don't want to ruin a flange so we start them all by hand and then we'll come back we tighten them down and torque them into place now that we have all of our bolts in on our rear flange as well as the front now what we want to pay attention to is as we tighten this down it's going to suck the drive shaft unit here into this flange and you want to pay attention to how you're doing that so what you want to do is normally tighten one side, tighten the other. So you're going to do it in a star pattern. So you evenly pull this in flush. Otherwise, it'll be crooked. You'll end up with a drive shaft wobble and you don't want that to happen. Now before we torque these down, you wanna go ahead and grab something to secure this because right now we're in neutral. We can't put it in park because we need to go ahead and rotate this here and torque the upper ones as well. So we're gonna use this type of securing strap. This is a rubber strapped wrench per se. Feed this through. Now you don't want to grab the drive shaft with a big pair of pliers. You can crush and damage that drive shaft. That's why we're opting to go this way here. Let's go ahead and torque these down to 41 foot pounds. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same for the front. Now that our drive shaft is all torqued into place, we can go ahead and remove our strap. I'm gonna bring our cross member up here. We're gonna install the two nuts onto the transmission mount. And this will kind of hold it in its general area. I'm not gonna tighten these. That'll give us some maneuverability to go ahead and get everything else lined up and installed. We 
We have our three bolts on the side over here. Tighten these down. You want to make sure these are good and tight. Go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. cross brace on the driver's side here. Get these bolts to started. Let's go ahead and tighten these down. down our transmission mount nuts here. You just want to make sure all of these are good and tight. At this point here, we can go ahead and start to lower our jack. And remove that install your lower splash shield. The front portion of the shield fits on top of the front of the cradle here and almost latches in. Push us up into place and install the bolts. Now there's normally two on the front here. Ours is missing one. Should be one on the left side here, but we're installing our right one. And then we have our two on the rear. and tighten these down. Reconnect the ground terminal. Slide that down into place. And let's go ahead and tighten down the terminal nut here. I'll make sure that's good and snug. Give that turn a little wiggle, make sure that is locked on pretty good. Let's now go ahead and install the lid. Now on the bottom of the lid here, you're gonna have four of these little tabs here. I wanna go ahead and line those up. Once we get the two front ones lined up, it'll make it easy for the front ones to line up as well. down. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.